Okay, we're back. Now, I'm organising now. This is um, this should be the last video for this session. Um, I'm about to do the uh, sleeve and I'm also going to do the binding. So first things first is you've got to measure the width of your quilt along the top. And when you cut it, cut it a good half inch either side, so an inch in total, shorter. Then turn the ends, the shorter ends, under like that. And we're going to top stitch those. So what I'm going to do is actually turn the video around and I'm going to top stitch them. I've got the black in and I've got my walking foot. So I'm hoping it behaves nicely. And then I will show you what I do next. And we'll um, go from there. So I hope it's not too rough when I turn it around. <laughs> I'm just going to sit that under there for a minute while I get myself sorted. Put my gloves on because these babies help in all things with quilting and sewing. Helps me with holding fabric, especially if it's, um, uh, what do they call it, um, slippery. So needle down and remembering I've got a, a size 70 needle on this and I'm going to do a top stitch. So I want my stitch length to be around about three and a half to four. I'm gonna go four, because I want a nice big stitch, okay? And I'm just gonna run it along here. And then just cut off, turn it around there. Need my eyeballs on, I don't know where I've put them. I've buried them, oh, there they are. So I can see black on black's pretty hard to see. So then I'm stitching roughly um, a quarter of an inch from the last one to try and eat it then. So I'll just fix that up before we move on to the next. You can see I've got a, a little bit of the salvage in there, but you're not going to see that. So I did leave it in. Just pull that out. It's just got caught up. I don't know why it does it. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. That'll go into the seam, so that's all good. Just got to find my little scissors that I had before. There they are. Now I'm using a percale, a black percale. Um, it's 100% cotton, and I've been told it's 200 thread count. I like it because it's not as see-through as some of the others. Um, some fabrics, um, like I think homespun, can be a little bit more see-through than I like, a little bit thin. Um, I don't know why it just it did the varying thing before. That was because I had my um, stitch stuck in under there and it pulled it in. Okay, so I'm going to put my stitch length back to 2.4 because um, that's the standard. And now I've done that and I've done double stitching on there. And stitched down you can see it's a top stitch I'm now going to take it back to the iron and I'll show you what I do next okay so what I'm going to do is so this is the wrong side and this is your right side don't worry about the fluffs <laughs> we'll get rid of them later so what I want you to do is do right side together and just press it Okay, now we'll stitch that. Sorry, we're going to go back and forth a little bit, but I hope you can stay with me. Now, remember, I've put the stitch length back to 2.2 or 2.4, I should say, and I'm doing a little bit more than a quarter inch just because I don't like to see the seam come undone. And I'm just going to make sure that it's level, even. going to just reverse sew that in bit there well, not reverse sew but you know what I mean go backwards a bit cut off my fluffy bits don't want them there they'll get to be a nuisance later um, and there and we will go back to the iron now Now I've still got it inside out, 
I'm going to turn it around the right way. It's quite easy because... Um, sorry, I just had a message come up on my phone. Because it's wide. Um, now, I did cut it 8 inches wide. So if you've got any questions, please, please, please ask me. So it was 8 inches wide. If you're doing a quilt for a show, it needs to be 10 inches wide. But because this is only a small quilt um, going to a private home... I am quite happy to have it at eight inches and that will be fine. So then what I do is I find the seam, which is there, and I put it in the middle of one, like fold it like that. So there's the seam along there and then I press it. Okay, so that's it there. That's the sleeve, just there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is... I'll just show you first. There is the uh, signature block. I hand sewed that on and I put a little bit of butterfly with this thread, which is a razzle thread. It's 12 weight and it's got a little bit of bling in it to make it pretty. Um, so this goes to the top and you make sure you have that seam facing downwards to the back of the quilt, okay? And we're going to just pin that in and I'm going to just move it down a fraction about there and I'm going to pin that down and I'm going to base stitch that in Actually, I put it right at the edge and base stitch it down and I like to make sure yeah that it goes oops a daisy these are smaller ones it's a bit hard to get through They're so thick so I just have a couple of pins just to hold one end and the other I do like to pin my work um, but I don't like to over pin I do find that um, just a pin here and there will will just help in the long run so I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to then sew that down and then I'm going to show you what I do next okay so I'm going to lift up my foot because I've got my walking foot on I need it right on the edge scissors are in the way I'm going to up this the stitch length to about three um, and I'm going to just stitch along now yes I did run over a needle but I've got a big or a pin I've got a big big stitch so chances of hitting it are very minimal and I just go right over the whole thing to the end and then just cut off all right so take that out and take the pins out and that is in ready for the next step. Trim off your little hairy bits. Um, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking in the background, but he's cranky with me. I've got the chooks out running around, which I did a video of before. And if I have him out, he tends to have a go at them. So I'm just going to sit that under there and push it down just to hold it in place. And I'm going to put a pin here just to hold that down for a minute while I'm sewing the next step and a pin over here now that doesn't mean that's where I'm going to hand sew it down but that just means um, it's not going to flap around and get in my way when I do the binding all right then I can pop this one aside it's ready to go aside okay now <clears throat> I have cut four strips actually it might be five of black fabric um, this one seems to have a right and a wrong side, so I've put them all up the right way. Now, they are two and a half inches wide, and the first thing I need to do is sew them together. Um, it's it's um, near impossible to do it if you don't have them sewn together, unless you're doing what they call a blind binding, which we're not on this one. So, right sides together, you've got one this way, and then we want one going vertical and you want it to line up up there place that point where those two bits of fabric meet okay 
you can see the line, the, the edge of the fabric for the one underneath is here. You can see that there. I'll get my fingers out of the way. There it is. I line that fabric up there. So I create an L shape. And I'm making a B line straight for there. I'm going to put my stitch length back down to 2.4 and just zoom over there nice and quick. And then stop. I'm going to turn it over so it's right side up. So that's wrong side, right side. So I flipped it over for the next one. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to, you can pin this if you like to. I'm going to pop that there. I'm holding my hand on it nice and firm. Turn it around. Lift up the foot. Slide it under to where the point meets the fabric, the corner meets the fabric. And go straight to that point there. B line and just with the needle on the fabric I stop and repeat that for each piece as you go once you've done this this is creating your mitered, uh, mitered joins once you've done this a handful of times it'll come naturally and you won't need to draw lines and, and um, pin it to death so okay so I'm going to turn it over Right sides together. Just making sure that right side, yep. Because there is an actual difference with this black. I hadn't noticed it before on anything else, but I can notice it on this. And I'm going to aim for that one over there. And lined up nicely and stop. Cut off. And then I'm going to have them all joined together like that. So that's what you call chain piecing. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is snip them apart. I'm going to grab my really big scissors, which I'm going to reach out in front of you. Excuse me. Get that first one here, just snip off any tails. And you can see that stitch line. Well, you might not see it very well on the camera, but I can see it there. And I'm just going to trim a quarter inch from that and cut that off. Now, do that to each one as you go along. Don't cut too close, give yourself a little bit of room like that and like that. I've got one more to go. So I had five pieces, so that'll be four joins. So doing that will actually give me my mitered joins. So there's your mitered join, okay? I'm gonna wish you around again and take you over to the iron for the next step. Like I said, we'll go backwards and forwards a little, <laughs> but we'll get there. Now, first thing I do is you can see that's the seam there. You can see it's quite lumpy. So, because it hasn't been pressed. So first thing I do is I just press them down one way. Okay, I don't open these up. To open them up would um, weaken them and I don't want them weakened. And it's just that join. That's all I'm ironing at the moment is just the join. That's just a quick tap down with the iron just to iron them in place like that, nice and flat. That makes it easier for my next step. So this is the wrong side of the fabric, okay? So what I'm going to do is fold it in half. So wrong sides together. I get the iron and I slowly, you might find it hard to see from your end, you can see I'm slowly folding as I go and making those meet. And as I do one bit, I move it along do that and just keep going until I go right from one end to the other. Sometimes, depending on the quilt, it can be, you know, really, really, really big piece of uh, long fabric, like a big long snake. Um, this one's not so bad because it's a small, small piece. I've probably got plenty of leftovers on this, um, but that will, will give you the start of your binding. So this puts your binding together. And then we're going to sew it to the actual piece. And I'm going to show you how I do my corners. 
and I'm going to show you and some of you might have seen that video on YouTube but I'm going to show you that how I join them together so that they um, meet beautifully without having to unpin or get any tape measures out and stuff like that. So we're nearly there. Got the fluff on the fabric because of the wadding, but that's all right, it'll come off later. So then I have it all folded so you can see they're all folded like that. All right, all joined together in one long big piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is the binding. Now, I don't actually pin it to the actual quilt, but I'm going to show you what I do. All right, I'm just going to lift this camera up a little, see if it'll lift up. <clears throat> I'm just going to pop that out over there and get the actual quilt. So what I do is I actually go to the right side and I give myself a fair amount of length. So I say if I start there, I'm going to start sewing here, somewhere here, and I'm going to leave a big gap. So I will pin it just for today's um, sesh, just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I only pin a few ahead of myself. So I will pin that there like that. And I'll pin this here up to the corner. And then with this corner, I fold over like that. Okay. Now being a black fabric, it does make it a bit hard. So I finger press it. And then I get my trusty sew line pen or any pen I can find and I draw on that line okay so can you see that so I draw on that line so I folded it up there like that up there and I'll only do the first corner here and the rest I'll do on the machine and then I'll fold it down so that it runs parallel with the actual edge of the quilt. See how it's a nice square shape here now? Um, and this is the only one I'm going to pin. The rest of it I'll show you what I do. So that gets you that nice corner. I haven't even pinned that down. It's just sitting there. Then you can repeat that all the way along. Now you will notice what I did do was this join here, the seam of the, the, um, the mitered join I've made sure that it's not up in this corner here if it does at some point get up in that corner it can get quite thick up in the corner and it can affect the way that the quilt sits so let's turn this around and go over to the actual machine and I'll sew it together for you Okay, now um, what I do is I place, sometimes I place it on the floor, sometimes it's um, on my lap, it just depends on how long it is. Um, I'm going to move my camera over here so we can get you in. I'm going to move my machine over a fraction just so I've got a bit more room. That's my husband trying to ring me. I'm not too sure what for. <clears throat> so I need to put my foot down for start. Now I tend to do a bit bigger than a quarter inch seam. And if you can see, I've left a bit of a tail. I haven't started, you know, right in the, at the end of this. I don't bury my ends. I'll show you, I do a mitered end. So first things first, I'm going to stitch up and stitch back. And I do it, I run with my needle in the middle and I put the edge of the quilt right where that first little feeder is, that one there, okay? So that gives me a little bit more than a quarter inch. I like it that way so I get a nice full binding okay now this is where this is why I don't actually fold it over and all that sort of stuff first 
So I've unfolded it, right? unpinned it. Now I've already done the test by folding that that way so it runs parallel with the quilt up here. So I know I've marked my spot here with my pen. I'm going to sew up to that line and reverse sew a little. So my finger's on the button ready to go and then I just go backwards, just like that. So I have literally sewed right up to that line. All right, and then I'm gonna cut off. Um, the next thing I need to do, oops a daisy, just getting my sew line pen because I'm gonna need it, is once I've cut off, I then take it out and at my machine, I've got it all sitting on my lap. I'll just flip that up there so it's not in the way. So I fold it up there like that, like I had it before. So it's just like that. And then I fold it back the way I had it pinned. And I make sure that the edge of this top one runs with this one here, and that this runs parallel to here. That makes sense? Any questions yet? And then I place it on the edge of the quilt, needle down, run up and back, and just pause for a second and get my, myself sorted. And fold that down so it doesn't get in the way. And I will keep running along the edge of the quilt just like I did before, but without the pins. And because I've got the walking foot on, it's not gonna slip and slide and it's just gonna feed it through nicely. And at the same time, fingers crossed. Oops, Daisy. Hey, stop. <laughs> I have sewn that down, which is what I wanted to do was sew that sleeve into it, which it looks like I have. So I'll keep going until I get to around about there, about, about two inches from the end. And I again fold it up that way so it runs parallel to the edge of the quilt along here. All right, press hard with my fingers, get that finger press thing going on. And then I mark along that line with my white pen. I run up to that point and reverse. As soon as my needle hits it, and then stop and cut off. Okay, again, take it out from under there, fold it up and fold it back. Now, I know by looking at this, I can see, it'll be very, very hard, I have gone one stitch over that line. And to tell you honestly, I need to actually take that one stitch out. Um, I know you think one stitch won't be much, but it does make a difference in this case. And I'm gonna literally take that one stitch out and then it'll fold up where I need it to be. It's going to get sewn in, so it's no big deal. Um, so I'm going to now fold that over and see how it sits now. See how that sits better because it's not sticking out like it was. So I'm going to turn this around so I can see it properly. I want it to face me. And I've got it up there. I've got these two here, these two pinched together and joined, and like as in sitting together nice and even. I've got the top level with the top of the, the quilt, the edge of the quilt. I'm gonna pop that under there, foot down, needle down, go up and reverse back a bit, then go up a few while I've got some control on it, then release and put my quilt into gear and hold on to it. Now don't pull and pull that so tight that, um, you know, you, you make it um, twist or, you know, just you just need to pull it into place and then just hold, hold on to it and let the machine do the rest, let it feed it through. So I'm just <clears throat> positioning it so it's nice and even. Come down here and I get to about two inches behind it. There's a hair there. I'll get it out in a minute. And put that down. Fold up this way, like this, and really finger press it 
so it runs parallel again I'm going to have it nice and flat and then release it and draw that line and again try very hard not to go that one stitch over you could be better off going slower one stitch at a time all right and then go backwards slow okay either way is fine um, as long as it's not over that stitch it can be on it but not over it okay so that's going to do nicely that here now just lift that up fold up the end of the quilt I've got that up there like that like the last corners folding it back down so it runs parallel with the quilt I've got those edges there pinched I've got the top of it running along here nicely and I've got the edge of this binding running along the edge of the quilt along the side so I place the foot down needle down it'll go and back and forth stop to reposition myself because if I let it just keep going I'm going to end up with an awful mess um, and it's going to go everywhere I'm going to lose control so we keep going around we've got one more corner to go and then we've got the join and you can see this one's close to the corner but it's not close enough that it's going to interfere so that's a good thing so that was uh, fairly lucky <laughs> so we'll get up a little bit further uh, get over that seam and I'm a good two inches from the end. Again, fold that up, it's parallel across here. Okay. If you do this all the time, over and over again, it'll come naturally. Do the white line or a colored line, depending on your fabric, so you can see where you've got to go up to. If you need to slow the machine down, slow it down. Like I can actually slow this down and stop on one you know and then just go back a few stitches and cut off okay it's that important bit of not going past that white line that line that you drew then I move that up there again I know that it's in the right position by being there because I didn't go over that little white drawn line and I come back down pinch that again make them nice and even level it up with the top and the edge of this quilt here now this is the moment of truth all right so i'm going to start and get myself up there i'm going to leave myself about that much <laughs> about five inches all right so i'm just going to bend the quilt up now this is the part where people get really, really confused and stressed over, getting these two bits to join. So I'm just gonna go up to about there and reverse back. Now there's a reason why you give yourself plenty of space and I'm not too sure yet whether I just gave myself enough or not. not. So I'm gonna, oh, I think I cut it off already. So lift that up and that gives me heaps of room and I've got heaps of, of um, black um, fabric to do the binding now I'm going to cut off and you watch me do this on the end of this all right I'm going to cut off in between the point that I started over here and the point that I finished I'm going to cut one of these off just past the middle like that scary hey put that to the side and then I'm going to fold that over. Now, let me see if I can do this on the machine like this. Now, what I wanna do is just keep that nice and flat, lay this one over the top of it like that. Now, rather than getting out another piece of fabric, I'm just gonna put the foot down just to hold it. The, rather than getting out a piece of fabric, I've got that bit of binding that I've, I've cut off already. Now that is the same size as what I'm using because it's from the same strip. So I place it, you can see just there, there's the edge of this one underneath. See it there? So I place that on the edge of that, like that. Make sure that's nice and straight. And I get my scissors, and I kid you not, I cut there like that. Right, and I take that bit away 
So that there to there is the width of the binding. All right. Then I open it out like that. And the right side, oops, it is. I lift that up. The right side down. Now, when they're, when they're the same colour, it's very hard. I didn't quite give myself enough room, so I'm going to snip some stitches back just to give myself a little bit of leg room. I can swing it around a bit. Sorry, bear with me. So give yourself more than five inches. Give yourself about eight or ten. All right, that gives me a bit more room. Now, I've got this one. I'm going to open out flat. That's the right side, yeah? Then I get this one and just place it like that. Oops. Open it out. Come on, darling. Like that. And place it on like that. Now, before you sew and cut and anything else, all right, so I've made an L shape. So I've got one going that way and one coming that way. Um, and because I don't have a huge amount of room, I'll open that out flat, get this one, all right, twist it around so the edge of it, I'm just going to bend that, the edge of it is going along here and here. And pin that, especially when you're first starting. And then give that a bit of a bit more room there for the fingers to get in. Pin that down here. Alright, just pin it there. And then I want you to pin it over here. So those three points. Like I said, I haven't got much room because it's only a small quilt, so it does make it harder. So there you go, that's those three points. Then what you do is you take it out from there, fold it at that point, see, just like that, so that you've got that little diamond section that you're going to stitch across, a little T or L-shaped thing that I told you about before, and you've got that sitting looking at you. All right. So I'm going to get your quilt under there and you go, hold that up, just got to watch the camera. All right, so now I have this one open, we could have opened that up a bit more maybe, that might have made my life a little easier. Just open that up a bit more, just give me some room, there we go. Okay. We're going to go back over those stitches anyway. It's no biggie. It's only my fault because I didn't quite give myself enough room. There we go. A little bit more room so you can see that T. So you know how we joined the two bits of fabric together before in like an L shape? Now I've got it again, but I've got the right sides again sewn, uh, joined together, pinned, and then I've got... So my point of start is up here where that blue pin is. If I can get it back in there. Up here. Okay, and my point of finish is over there. I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to put it down under the machine. I'm going to actually hold it nice and firm with my finger, take the pin out, and put my needle down, and lift it up and back again. I haven't taken out this bottom one because I don't want it to move. So I'm just going to sew straight towards it until I'm almost on top of it, hold it down and keep sewing. Now, fingers crossed, I've done this right. <laughs> and I have. So, that then creates this. So you've got that bit there again, that triangular bit that we're gonna cut off. And I'm gonna be awkward when I do it because I'm doing it sort of sideways. It's a bit messy, it won't matter. It goes inside the seam. So I come along and finger press that down, all right? Make sure it's nice and flat. If there's any give, I'll give it a bit of a tug. Come back up 
before those stitches were done. And stop there. All right, now we've got that sewn. See how it's sewn? Even though it's a little bit loose, it's no big deal. See how that goes over the edge? That is no big deal. I'm going to sew that into the actual seam and I'm going to hold on to the back of the quilt and I'm just going to hold it really, really firm, really firm and make it stretch into itself. And I'll just go past that point where I unpicked and cut it off. Put these pins back before I stab myself. Lift up. So it might be a little bit like that there on this side, but when I turn it over, it's perfectly fine. See how that works out perfectly fine? You've got those little little bit of puckering there, but that's on that inside seam, not on the outside seam, outside of the seam, yeah? So now it is ready and raring to go for the next step, which is to do the hand binding. That I know you can do on your own. You don't need me to show you how to do a slip stitch, but what I will show you what I do with this is at the iron the next step is at the iron so we'll turn it around and do the last little bit of it so we've got the binding on that's fantastic that's the best thing you want to see the bindings on it's ready for hand sewing if you've got a really good friend who loves to do hand sewing now she comes into play but what I do is you can see that I've still got that there See how it's still there? Um, it's still pinned and that's okay. What I'm going to do is turn, this is the back of the quilt of course, turn over my corners, turn over that corner. Now if you've got too much bulk in there you can always cut the ends of your corner off, okay? Um, so that it turns properly. And just turn those corners over like that. And that one there might need a little bit of a trim, which we can do. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just base that down a bit. There we go. And I get this binding. Just pull it out. Where did that come from? And I take these from here. And I want them to meet up with that line, that, that stitching line from the, um, the seam. And I've just sewn in. And I might put a couple in here just to hold that down. And as I come to a corner, that's probably not going to be a good one to show you because I might have to trim it. I'll see how we go. Grab some pins. So I'm just going to trim that bulk out of there. Oops, it goes. There we go. And that I need to come down there like that. Okay. And I'm going to pin it just there like this. Now, don't be tempted to sew this top one down. You only want to sew this bit down here. Sew that down there and you sew the inside one down there so that you've still got the tube. Okay. And I'll come to that in a minute. Once you've done that, you can always get your little zipper. Clean up those little hairs, okay? little hairs, and then pull that out, stretch it out, and I've got a really nice full binding. And I will, when I do my hand sewing, ensure that that comes over and covers that line, that that stitch line there. Sometimes I'll just pin from here across to the other side, just to ensure that I've got it down. Sorry, it's just going to play funny buggers with me. There we go. Pin that down in a minute. More fingers and thumbs when I do this, especially on mine. <clears throat> so pin it through there. Yeah, without pinning my finger into it. And I'll get this bit here and pin that down. Okay, and then sometimes I'll even get the iron and just press it down. Sometimes I'll even go this side to push it out. So we get the iron here, a really long cord, and push it out that side. Yeah. 
so I'm not having to stretch it and stuff. I'll pull that down. Okay. Just give it a nice iron just to pull those seams out. And it's not a steam iron. This has been a dry iron all this time. Okay. Just pop it out of the way. Go back here. And now it seems to want to move nicer. Nicer up. And I will pin it. And as I do it, I'll actually just, I think that's just the pin in the corner making it do that crunchy thing, that little crease thing. Let me put those there. I'm not reaching across the camera. Okay, and that's going to give us some nice points. Um, again, just make sure you're covering that seam, that stitch seam that you created from sewing the binding on. You don't want that hanging out. That looks really untidy. Um, and um, and you don't want your slip stitch showing because oh, that's just untidy too. Not that I'm a perfectionist, but I do like to have them neat-ish. Um, I've got little hairy bits here. Okay, move that over there. You can even get the corner and press it down with the iron if you want to, and then fold it back over. This is a perfect corner. Love it when it comes together. Get in there. Okay, so that, where's the camera? There it is. Come on, zoom in. No, it's too close. Try there. That has come up perfectly and my join is in the middle. So that looks nice. And I'll go all the way around this um, and I'll just put in, oops, a daisy, got myself, put in a handful of pins. Normally I sort of take them out as I go because I don't like stabbing myself. Um, and... Um, being a small quill, it's a bit easier to manage. Sometimes you can just have them in along the sides and then when you come to the corners, or you can have it to the corners and not to the sides. So it's a personal preference and everyone's going to be a little bit differently. That's a wobbly one, wobbly pin. Um, but that will then make it almost done. So I can do this tonight when you guys are sleeping. <laughs> um, we've only got one more day of videoing, which is tomorrow. Um, now, before I finish off this video, I want to show you this. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to sew this side of that um, sleeve to here. Okay, you're going to just slip stitch that down. So, but what you want to do is have it so that you only slip stitch and leave a quarter, a half an inch off the end. Okay and fold it back that half an inch oh yeah half an inch so what i tend to do is um, might be too much of her I, I double check with my actual quilt because yeah, everyone's a little bit different and might only need a quarter of an inch so i'll just pin this down like i was doing all the way around okay oh, catch there we go and I'm seriously thinking that I might only need a quarter of an inch for here because it's a small quilt. Because when that folds up, I don't want it to go past the edge of the actual quilt. I just want the fold. See that fold there? So that there, when I hold it here at the quarter of inch mark, I don't want it to go past here. But it can still take a rod. Yeah? So you're going to sew that down there to a quarter of an inch beforehand. And to help and make my life a lot easier, I tend to roll it back so the quarter of an inch line is right here where that pin is that's my fold line from the seam remember that that fold line i did before so i roll that back make sure it's flat at the back of it and i re-iron that down there 
and give it a new seam, okay? Um, this will definitely make my life easier later tonight because there'll only be one seam and not two, all right? And then that means that I can still get the, the um, rod in there and I pin that then down along here and that's where I'm going to slip stitch and because you've got it up a little when it comes down it's going to actually cover the stitches as well so this is this is how we put um, do the rods sleeves for the rods um, and you make sure you slip stitch those little bit areas down as well um, and you only sew up to there so we put that in there and there we go and this end so now I've got 3,165 pins in here <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee that I am going to prickle myself um, if you think that's not going to be you know enough um, you can make it a little bit bigger but like I said to make that gap bigger you've got to watch that it doesn't go past here all right Okay, so that's that. Um, I'm going to do another corner or two because um, I love it when the corners look really nice and you fold it right up under there, pull that over and I've got a nice corner. Just fold it right in. There we go, lovely corner. There it is. And just put a pin in there. <laughs> I love the sound effects hey all right so pull it out that way and that way fold it under and get that right in under there grab that side and pull it over a bit like doing a nappy all right got to make sure they're nice and tight tuck them in it's very thick I might have to there we go. All right. And that's all the corners. So on this side, my corners look really nice. I can see that that's a little bit loose on that one. And when I come around, I'll, um, I'll just grab that and pull it, pull it around like it should be. Um, but everything else is looking really, really good. Um, that is the finished piece. So I'll just pop the camera up a little. Let me see if I can do that without making a mess of everything. Oh, hello. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. Got my hands in there. I'm going to take that off and put this back on here. There's my roof of my thingy. And put that in there. All righty. Now, my finger's all over you. All right, let me just turn this around. So yeah, I've got my buff head in there. There we go. That's it there. How cool is that? And she is done, hand sewn down tonight. I've got the signature block on. Look at that. I even put a butterfly on there. I hand sewed this down. This is the um, razzle thread. That's it there. And um, I've got a few little, look at that little boogaloo. I'll just get rid of him. Get out. There we go. And um, we're done. I uh, shaved all the back of it, so it's all looking good. I've got the sleeve on. I can't complain. I'm thinking that's pretty damn good. What do you reckon? Hey, and it's sold. Isn't that lovely? I think that's really lovely. So. Um, I'm very proud of that. I'm glad I got to do it. I'm glad you guys got to watch me do it. So you can see all those tiny little stitches everywhere. Look at them. Thousands upon thousands. Look at that. Some ribbons, figure eights, or whatever you want to call them. Sashiko sort of stitching. Um, that's that scribbly one that I like. It makes it look like um, suede. There's your paisleys. Some burbles. 
what I call it, stipple. There's some uh, swirls. There's some meandering with squares or straight lines. There's some feathering, a bit of feathering, and some bubbles and some um, stipple. And there's some um, swirls with flowers. Oh, there's that scribbly one. And there's the heart that I put into it. That's because I put love into it, Susan. <laughs> Susan. Sue. <laughs> that looks really good. I've got a fluff on there. Okay. Wow. That was um, really awesome. I'm really happy with that. I love how it turned out. And it's nice and bright. Love the Lumiere paints. That was a really good experiment. I was very happy with it. Um, now, products that I used. Let's go into those. Um, I might finish this. Oh, no, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. So the products I used, I'll just turn it around. So you got me. Hey. <laughs> um, I used my gloves. I do have them for sale here. I'll just see if I can get this a little bit longer. A little bit like that. All right, that's these Marcia Borales. Um, They are quilting grip gloves or nifty quilters gloves, whatever you want to call them. They're $38 a pair. I use them all the time. Honestly, all the time. You'll use a pair of gloves and then you'll go to use these and you'll never go back to normal gloves again. I've been able to wear them taking, changing needles. I've changed threads. I've changed... Um, uh, feet on my machine I've had coffee I've had um, time out in the yard I've still had them on they are amazing so Michelle's patchwork.com is where you'll find them under quilting gloves and you'll find them if you search there um, I also used the fabric I used was a um, batik. The binding fabric is percale and percale is 100% cotton. Um, it's just a little bit heavier, like it's got a finer weave. It's not so translucent. Um, sometimes homespun can be a little bit translucent. Um, so what else did I use in it? The thread I used were gems. What's these ones? Let me turn this around so you can see um, there. Um, they are five dollars a reel so with I didn't even use a full reel for that so um, that's the the gems and they are literally five dollars a reel and the other one that I used was the black rosard that was the black thread that I used in it it's a little bit thicker um, than the uh, gems and it's very very solid very very solid thread it's got a poly core with a cotton wrap. Okay, then we'll just go over here. The paints I use, there's some just some artworks that I did. Go around here, the roof of my shop. <laughs> and I used da, 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 the Lumiere. Oh, there we go. So they're the paints that I used. Um, I used different colors and they are $9.95 each. They're not yet on my website, but you are welcome to contact me by PM or um, email. This is them here. That's the range of colors I have in the pearlescent. And that is the range of colors that I have in the metallic. And honestly, they are so vibrant. They really are. Just love them. I'm, I'm now officially hooked. Um, okay, so we'll just go back over here. What else did I use? Oh, the needles. My needles that I use, I say my needles, they're not my needles. Um, I use these needles and these are superior needles. Oops, a daisy. Down we go. So superior needles, I've got them in size 70, 80, 90, 100. Um, that's the 90s and they're the 100s. Um, I also have needle threads with a light so you can press the light and it lights up where you're going to go. I can't see the light because I think it's got a safety thing in it so it doesn't run the battery out. Anyway, they are $12 a pack of five and you can see how much sewing I did with one needle. And I only changed it when I had to do some piecing. So they are brilliant needles and you'll find them on my website as well. They're homespuns, if anyone's interested in homespuns for $10 a metre. And I have dotty ones, the micro dots, as well as the plain. I've got a matching plain one to most of them. 
Okay, that's those. Uh, what else did I use? Uh, the wadding I used was a poly wadding and two layers of it was a Matilda's own. And I think that's about it. Just see if I can get this to turn around. There we go. So the sales that I do have on for this weekend, they finish tomorrow, is this here, a pack of five scissors we use them all the time i have got mine inside at the moment with my other machine pack of five for normally 26 and i've got them down to 22 which is cheap as cheap okay i also have an add a quarter which i used that today i used a larger one but i used it with my um uh, ruling the lines for the um uh, signature lock but they're really designed for foundation piecing or um uh, what well, they call it templates so that you can add a quarter on easily and this is a six inch ruler normally sixteen dollars and i've got them at twelve dollars and i've got limited stock then i have some paints as well these are artistic paints so they're paints that you can use either on canvas or add in a fabric medium and then you can use them on your fabric i use them they work fine it's just you've got to have a fabric medium now uh, the other item that i had for sale Ah, yes is this one it's the macrame wall hanging okay you can see the design there the leaves and branches they're normally 20 25 and I've got that down it's got everything in it I've got them marked down to $20 oh and I forgot to tell you the paints which are normally $46 or $45 I've got them down to 40 so um and that gives you a good range it's a it's a really good range of colors and there's the colors on the back okay then the last thing i have for sale is i have the inkjet printable fabrics and I'm off on there <laughs> i have these so i'm just gonna cover the name of the person who's already bought some just in case i don't want their name out there inkjet printable fabric so it's a3 now you can cut them in half and it becomes a4 they go through any inkjet printer um, and you can print up it and do whatever you like with them they just run through the printer you just put them in one at a time um, and it's 100 percent cotton and they're heat set so when you iron them they become set um, although you wouldn't hang them in direct sunlight you know what i mean any any fabric's going to fade in direct sunlight so I normally buy the A3 and then cut them in half just in case I want something bigger. You could take it also to a printing shop and get them to do it. Just obviously these days you've got to ring ahead. But this is um, the easy way to do it at home while we're sitting at home not knowing what to do or, or figuring out which, which project we're going to finish first. Um, these inkjet printable fabric sheets could come in handy. You never know. Um, so normally $45 and I've got them marked down to, I think it's a damn good saving of $10, I think. Yep, got them marked down to $35 for a pack of five. Cut in half, that'd be like a pack of 10 of A4. So that's um, a good saving for that one. Uh, that's about it for today. I won't be doing live sales tonight, so I'm going to have to message my elf on the shelf. Unless you guys sort of really want me to, I was going to not do that tonight um, because we've still got tomorrow uh, videoing. So I was going to try and catch up on some pattern writing. Um, if you've got any questions with anything I've done in the last few days or anything at all, really, you're welcome, except I can't answer any personal questions <laughs> oh I want to show you too I also have little packs of um, batik so I'll put turn it around there's my kitchen <laughs> it's a bit messy okay so I have one two three of these so it's 81 82 and 83 they are packs of five and you can see it's got the lines right down the orange and yellow and then it's got the really nice white one with all the mixture colors so i've got three of those they're normally 18.75 and those three are now 15 dollars a pack of five fat quarters which is cheap 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 
Then I have one of this one, which is number 89. So if you're interested, just message me and PM me. Um, 1875 down to $15 for five fat quarters. And some have some plain ones in as well. I don't seem to be seeing any comments, so I'm presuming that Facebook are playing funny buggers again. So please PM me if you're interested. Number 99 or 98, 99 and 100. So 98, 99 and 100 are normally 18.75 each. They're now down to um, $15 a pack of five fat quarters. You can see how beautiful the colour is. Then I have numbers 105, 106 and 107. And again, really lovely colours. These ones are all dotties. And they're down to from $18.75 down to $15. So these are real sales. These are not things that I've had and then just gone, oh, well, I'll just mark them down. This is how much I've been selling them for. Then I have number 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. They are all the same. They have 1, 2, 3, 4 dotty ones and a tone on tone very pretty and they are only $15 each compared when they were $18.75 all right so just PM me um, or you can send an email or you can get on my website and uh, contact me through there whichever anyway is fine or you can ring me but um, yeah message me on Facebook if you want to I'm happy to answer any questions uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat> it's nearly four o'clock. I think we, um, sorry, I was just trying to move my glasses up. I think we hang around here until about 4.30. So I'll be in the studio um, fiddling around here for another half an hour. What was the white pen you used to mark mitered corners on the binding? Just got a message through. That is called a... Um, so line pen i'll see if I've, i think i've sold them the ones that i had here but in saying that sorry i'm got my head in the camera um statewide sewing center have them carolyn um you can always drop in there because i know you're close by so so line pen is the one that i used um that um has a refill as well um normally comes in either white pink or green aquary sort of color and you can get refills for them they're brilliant love them they're great um what else is there um i think that's it guys i think that's all i've got to tell you no more questions i can can't see any questions come through um let's just have a look here what it's got see if it'll let me oops now i'm showing you the back door bit mad aren't I all right doesn't want to seem to show me any questions so I'm presuming no one's commented um I might see comments afterwards so if I do I will message you I'll go through and have a check so but thank you very much for joining me I've really enjoyed the day it's been a busy day but I've really enjoyed it and um I look forward to seeing you tomorrow I will still be in my baggy of attire because that's how I work <laughs> that's how I roll <laughs> I don't really dress up for many things these days. So um, I am looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Um, I sit down at my little machine. She's a ripper, the old 8900. Um, and I will talk to you then. Again, if you've got any questions, any concerns, if you want to know something, you want to know how to get involved in anything that I'm doing, just message me either through the website or Facebook, Michelle's Patchwork and Art on Facebook and michellespatchwork.com uh, on the web. All right, and I'm also on Instagram. I think it's michelle underscore patchwork, michelle's underscore patchwork. All right, so talk to you soon. Um, if I don't get onto Ioni and she heads on over here before I have a chance to, then we will be going live, but I will message you well beforehand. So um, I'll pop it up on my site and you'll be able to see some more sales. So yeah, why not? We'll see. <laughs> Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.